Hey guys, today's sponsor is so easy. It's something I use every day. Use it myself. It's Rocket Money. Boom. Right there. See, I got a bill for 700 Oh, Jesus! $789 for insurance. Spotify, $11. What the heck is that? You can cancel unwanted subscriptions right there. And monitor your spending. Set up a budget. This thing has got me so organized. Seeing how much I actually spend, I love of rocket money yeah i didn't know that hulu had gone up so much in price since i had signed up for like two dollars yeah and then yeah. it just goes through and it's like hey uh, a, a new uh, subscription has gone up in price it's like okay cancel yeah and it says instantly find better rates uh, and it can go and actually lower bills for you. If it saves you a bunch of money, hundreds of dollars, they get a small percentage, and you get all of the savings. That's how it works. It's a completely free app, guys, with some upgradable premium uh, features that will help you get organized. It is really something that I use every day. I highly recommend it. Joe has it on it. He's oh, the one I that turned it. me on to it. So I loved it. Uh, I love the breakdown system. It tells you what categories are high, and you might want to check that out. So join over 5 million people that use it today. It's free. Download it below. I've got uh, a little link there for you. Rocketmoney.com slash Angry Joe Show. Click the link in the description, guys, and get started for free. Uh, it's really awesome. Okay, I hope you enjoy the video, guys, and check out Rocket Money. It's better late than never. These are the top 30 most anticipated games of 2024. How do I do this list without making this three hours long? Kind of just putting the games that I'm most excited about in order from, from 30 to 1. I'm trying a new format. If you don't like it, let me know. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. Uh, initially, I put the trailers together to kind of let the games speak, sp speak for themselves with a little bit of commentary at the end. But you guys wanted to see more commentary, more of me talking over it, even though I kind of wanted you to get that, that uh, atmosphere. But let's talk about the games that are on the list. Uh, and let's go uh, over them one by one. Number 30. So first one is Men of War 2. This is number 30 Men of War 2. Basically, it's a uh, World War 2 RTS uh, franchise. We're getting a sequel. So new units, uh, new locations, campaigns, game modes. What's so special about this one? Well, there's a cinematic single player uh, campaign. You're going to get uh, allies and you're going to get Soviets uh, where you're playing against the, the, the Germans. Um, there's also a lot of multiplayer emphasis this as well so you're gonna have pvp and even co-op modes i love playing these games cooperatively with other joe and alex this game in particular is hard as fuck like there was a demo recently and you get a few german units and you move forward and you just get obliterated and i was like how the hell do you um actually win in this game there's a ton of historically accurate units uh you know they they really pride themselves on getting that part of it right and then full mod support so men of war 2 if you like really detailed rts's where you can go down into the soldier level and even the soldier has individual guns and bullets and, and stats and bits um and cover and all that stuff matters in this game then you're gonna love men of war they even got doggies in the game and civilians and stuff and uh it's really really fun so i'm hoping men of war 2 works out and ends up being a really fun on RTS World War II game. Number 29. Classified. This next one is Classified France 44, and I don't think you need to know why I like this one. This is basically XCOM, but with World War II. French resistance, creating your people. I hope 
Hopefully you can rename people. I hate it when I want to be able to rename Joe. I want Joe to be the nice French uh, blonde hair lady, and I'm going to name her other Joe, and she's going to fight against the Germans. You know, hopefully we can rename our forces. You know, they have a lot of different mechanics on it. It's turn-based tactics. It's still strategy, uh, and you're doing all of this in a campaign before the D-Day landing. So in this one, I'm actually going to let some of the trailer explain it because the, the developers themselves kind of explain some of the mechanics so we'll watch some of that right now thin down the enemy numbers then when your squad is in a good position to strike launch your ambush classified pushes the genre in new and exciting directions characters have more action points for more nuanced and tactical play our flexible overwatch system allows you to shoot or wait for another target your choice foliage allows you to hide in plain sight Weapons have a spray area, spelling danger for anyone near your target, including allies. You will start with a squad of elite special forces, then grow your team by recruiting fighters from the French Resistance. Each character can be customized with an evolving arsenal of authentic World War II equipment. Choose their loadout and hone their unique abilities as you play. The campaign challenges you to make vital, long-term decisions with the ultimate aim of building the strongest resistance force before D-Day. On a map of northern France, you decide which missions to take, where to spend your resources, which factions to support, which regions to conquer, and which resistance abilities to pursue. What happens on D-Day will be down to your skill and strategic decision making. Can you do enough to secure an allied victory? Watch out for more in-depth gameplay videos soon. Number 28. This next one, I don't know, man. It could go either way. Super cheesy. This is John Carpenter's Toxic Commando. John Carpenter is a legend of horror, uh, and he likes games, he, he does music, and apparently this is going to be his first game. I'm a little worried because it does look like it could be too cheesy or too crappy, but apparently the game is for people who like buddy movie vibes, over the top humor, action, horror, 80 cinema, Obviously, they're really making use of that John Carpenter main name. But basically, you team up with friends, you face down hordes of monsters, which I'm hoping that it's not just zombies. It's just in it, there's tons of different monsters. I think we saw different creatures in the trailer, as you'll see here. And it is a first-person shooter, uh, apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic, where you upgrade your skills, you test out new abilities, there's a bunch of challenges, um, and I just, I'm hoping that the there will be a story mode to go along with it, making it like another John Carpenter film. Some of them are really good, some of them are kind of not so good. So we'll see whether Focus Entertainment can do this. They've done some good stuff and they've done some bad stuff, so we'll, we'll see uh, on this one. So I'm gonna let the rest of this play out. Number 27. Next on the list, this one's really good. This one might be the only one on the list that may not come out in 2024. Some of these might get delayed too off the list, but this one is like a small development team, maybe one or two guys. It's Dwarf Real-Time Strategy Conflict. Not Dwarf, the guy that, that sits on his knees and the little kid, I don't, I don't know if you know that. Anyways, D-O-R-F, uh, and that is um, uh, basically it's Command and Conquer, Red Alert, just with wild-looking units, these massive, gigantic Goliathans going across the battlefield. Really unique factions. Apparently, there's three unique factions. So you can conquer your enemies in a twisted vision of the future. You can construct scrawling bases, scour the land for resources, so it's that traditional mine and refine, and then assemble powerful en uh, uh, armies of land, air, and sea units to uh, smash each other with. And this is just amazing. I like this. I, I like anything RTS. I like going back into my nostalgia. And you see there's a big fucking nuke there at the end. This looks fucking awesome. 
number 26. Next, Indiana Jones in the Great Circle. We all saw this on the Xbox reveal, and we don't know a whole lot about it other than it coming out in 2024, it being very high quality, Todd Howard producing. And, uh, you know, this could be a great idea. I hope that they get back, and it does look like a younger indie, you know, so they're not beholden to Harrison Ford, uh, who is getting older now. Uh, he could still provide the voice, or in the future, they can have voice uh, look uh, sound alikes, so as long as they're getting the essence of indie right. And since it's no longer continuing in the movies, I think they've gone and killed that horse. Uh, maybe it can continue in video games and give us what we want. So I want to see archaeology. I want to see uh, tomb raiding. I want to see punching Nazis and, and getting into fist fights. And you see a lot of that in this trailer as it plays here. So I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I think it depends on the setting. And so as long as they stay realistic, stay away from aliens, stay away from uh, fucking uh, you know, time travel and shit. Um, and I think think we're good so um i don't think we'll ever get anything as crazy as the the fucking ark of the covenant melting people's faces off uh but hopefully we can get some good gameplay with the whip maybe we'll get a moment where the guy's you know <laughs> taking the sword and doing crazy stuff and we just shoot him that'd be awesome you gotta use a gun but make the gun very sparingly used so this big budget could work out to be awesome Bethesda, I don't know. We'll see. Does look a little stiff at times, but yeah, there it is. Patron of the fallen angels. Protector of the... Chukulimani. The Great Circle. You have any idea how old that was? Number 25. Next up on the list, this is an oldie but goodie. Earth Defense Force 6. I think it already came out in Japan. It's coming out with English localization uh, this year, 2024. If you're really enjoying Helldivers 2 or you can't get into the servers right now because it's so popular, then uh, go play the granddaddy of Helldivers 2. The third person, silly, over the top, shooting a bunch of ants and watching the bugs explode and, and showers of green goo. That is Earth Defense Force, Earth Defense Force 6. And yeah, they just can lots of different threats it's not just ants you know so um i'm looking forward to this one it's a lot of fun with friends that's the whole reason why you play this particular series you and three other buddies team up and then just go at it mindless fun there's like fucking kaiju looking things big monsters fucking trucks and shit and it's gonna be fun Number 24. A new South Park game, that's right, in all its three-dimensional glory. They're really bragging about that. I'm not sure why. It's like, but because uh, we have seen that uh, three dimensions before. Hell, y'all remember the Nintendo 64 open world game. This time, the kids are um, basically you, um, fighting with snowballs, uh, playing a game where the elves are invading the kingdoms and shit. And so you team up with up to uh, three friends. And uh, you go, or you can go in with solo with bots and you battle through Snow Pile Town of South Park. So basically, action combat game, uh, equip a bunch of different weapons, uh, deploy, deploy devastating upgradable special abilities in a new adventure to save the world and enjoy a day without school. So hopefully, you know, it seems like all the voice cast has returned and everything is good and fucking Butters and Clyde and fucking Cartman and fucking Eric and, and everybody. Buddy are, are gonna be there and I'm looking forward to it so you're making a mistake Cartman are you denying that you were gearing up your entire army to attack 
our fucking base? Says who? Says Clyde. And do you always trust what Clyde says? Hell no, Clyde's a total dumbass. Ah! You're all acting crazy. Got weapons here. It's the apocalypse. Prepare to die. Kick that fucking elf ass. No. Good luck trying to ruin this game. I'm sure you'll manage. Number 23. This next one I know barely anything about. This is uh, a game that is a PvPvPvE. It says it itself. It's a tactical first-person extraction shooter where six squads of three operators each are tasked with entering, securing, and extracting an artifact in a hostile horrific environment so i think that's what attracting me to it that it looks like you're going into a zone a horror zone and you know like hunt showdown and anything that you can give me more hunt showdown i'm i'm there for it looks like an interesting world um i'm curious in these extraction shooters what's most important to me not only is the gunplay uh, the gunplay fun and and squad tactics there and available for you to succeed but how interesting is the loot how interesting is the experience in the world before you extract and that's what this one kind of looks like it has um at least might be more intriguing than normal so uh it says to progress you'll need to complete quests secure artifacts and escape alive traders are waiting for you to get their jobs done don't fail them they'll reward you spend your rewards wisely in an rpg like progression tree to level up your character go back in with equipment so anytime we can do that it's a lot a lot of fun stuff so looking forward to this one So I think this one is going to come out in early access first, so we got to fucking deal with that shit. A lot of these games kind of do, and then the full release, they'll add more content, more maps, a secret expedition game mode, and a, a, a full-fledged team system. So it's not coming out with everything right away, but it is coming out in 2024, at least in early access. Number 22. How cool is this? I love this movie. If you haven't seen this movie, do it right now. Go on Amazon, fire it up, watch it. It's a horror classic. It's so wacky. It's so offbeat. And apparently it's getting a video game. It's an asymmetrical multiplayer, ho multiplayer horror game based on the film. Uh, you cooperate in a team of three players where you, if you're playing the clowns and you utilize their fucking wacky abilities, their technology, and you hunt humans with zany weapons and plan your alien invasion to harvest the population, or you could protect humanity, fight back as a team of seven humans who brave Crescent Cove and explore the city for valuable loot and weapons and avoid getting captured by the clowns, and I'll just let it speak for itself. <laughs> It says it provides a unique approach to hide-and-seek gameplay, customization, PvPvE, and dynamic objectives. So we'll see if it actually does so. Number 21. Life by You. Okay, guys, this is basically... EA's The Sims, only we don't have to deal with EA. We don't have to deal with Electronic Arts. 
Joe loves the Sims. He used to play all the time with Jacob over at his house. I'd come and watch them and, you know, see them uh, dress their uh, Sims up and build their house and put all the things. I even played the shit out of it as well, what I'm talking about. And I think it would be a hilarious. This is a fun game to stream with Joe, Alex, and you just kind of like create our characters and build. But what really impresses me about Life by You is all the new things that you can do. It almost seems too good to be true. Uh, there's just so many uh, editors and creators and things in this game that you'll see here in this, tra uh, this trailer. Tons of mods, creator tools, uh, no, no loading screens apparently. Uh, strike up real language conversations. How, how elaborate is that going to be? I don't know. Drive or bike to the countryside. Discover and complete quests. So this is just like a freaking fucking life simulator, basically. Um, hopefully it'll have the extended uh, character creator and um, the features will be easy and, and the creator will be very intuitive in order to set up. Because I always get intimidated by these by, you know, setting up massive cities and stuff like that. So hopefully some of it can be done for you. But look at all of these crazy creators. This could be huge. I think it's going to be kind of rough when it comes out. It is going to come out in early access first uh, June 4th so expect it to be kind of rough until they work it out and yeah so check it out number 20 Okay, Terminator Dark Fate Defiance. You knew I had to include this on the list. This comes out today as of this posting, or I don't know when I'm posting this because I'm adding these sections and trying to figure out the format for it. But, uh, you know, so I actually got to play it already and uh, the full version. And let me tell you, it's rough. It is rough at first, uh, but if you could get past the uh, lower than average graphics and, and, and get past the fact that it's not a traditional RTS, don't approach it as a traditional RTS, approach it as a simulator of the human resistance against Skynet and how relentless and, and almost uh, wave-like that the, the Terminators will be coming at you with. It's not a, a tower defense or anything like that. If there is elements of uh, taking your force, upgrading them, moving from uh, place to place, but and then there's even an overall map that you can go in, and it's a lot more story based than I thought, just without the big budget to put in a bunch of cutscenes. So it's a lot of it is voice acted, and a lot. I mean, these are experiences that can be a, a 3 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10 for the same mission depending on how you approach the mission. There are so many different ways of completing the objectives. There's even multiple choice and branching storylines when you're talking with characters in the levels. It's fucking wild. It's crazy. And uh, I think it's it's kind of it's rough to get into at first, but once you learn its mechanics, um, it could be awesome. He's been fighting alongside us. He is everything we need right now. And maybe something more. The best we can hope for isn't just Yeah, not the best marketing the for this game. <laughs> this is Ooh, how we fight cheesy, back. But worth it. It's like 30 bucks. $37, something like that. Number 19. Alone in the Dark is back. This franchise has, uh, I mean, it's one of the legendary ones, one of the original ones. Uh, you know, they've tried recent revivals. They were bad. Me and Joe played them. Some of them were bad. This one, I think, has the ha their heart in the right place. I am looking forward to kind of a love letter to the 90s classic horror. Um, it's got David Harbour. That's why I'm kind of excited about it, his performance in it. It's got that creepy girl from the trailer. And really, these kinds of games kind of all hinge on its storytelling, its horror it's uh, dialogue uh, the voice actors the performances and while it may not be massive big budget you know like with the best facial animations like let's say something like suicide squad kill the justice league uh it does i think do enough to immerse you so there's going to be puzzles there's going to be horror if you're into these kinds of things like uh me and joe are as we go through the horror games this might be one to keep an eye on it could 
go either way, but I think that so as long as it has a psychological story, something that's really going to intrigue us, some engaging puzzles, and a good ending, it could be uh, a sleeper, a horror sleeper. Uncle, what's going on here? Look at this mess! Uh, uh, I'm sorry. This place? It's... There are some very disturbed figures around here. And I don't think it's just the patients. I've been reading some things about how Dorsetto has a deranging effect on people. Are you ready to tell me why you are here, Miss Hartwood? And why you brought a detective? I want you to know I'm here to help. If you need me. She'll come and turn the world inside out. And things will begin again. Number 18. Number 18 is Rise of Ronin. This is a fascinating game. This is a uh, single player PlayStation 5. Not a lot of exclusives. Uh, you know, people are worried about uh, 2024 and PlayStation. This one should should at least help soften that blow. Action role playing game developed by Koi Temko, uh, Tecmo and Team Ninja. Now, this thing has been in development since uh, 2015, uh, according to Team Ninja president. And it allows you to create a custom character. I love it when they allow us to do this. So it's got a w wide variety of weapons during the uh, motion area katanas various firearms because that started to happen in this and basically the game will feature things like st uh, story choices at key moments hopefully that allows branching choices and things uh, allowing you to side with or fight against other non-player characters which will affect the story it's going to be a, a bunch of historical cities like yokohama uh, kyoto Ed edo um, as well as areas in the countryside, and you can see here, at least in this trailer, the developer is kind of uh, explaining some of the mechanics. Um, but you can you can use horses, grappling hooks, gliders. Uh, you can swap between three difficulties on the fly. And get this. This is the crazy part you may not know. A three-player cooperative multiplayer mode. If, if this doesn't look fucking cool to you, I don't know what's wrong with you. So I'm going to let the developer kind of explain it themselves with the rest of the trailer. And hopefully you enjoy this one. Keep an eye on it.現代血の揺れてないやつはついてこい。さあ、倒すも何も。バックはもうとっくに死にてえなんで。Number 17. Guys, this is from the creator of Silent Hill. It's a new horror game. We don't know much about it. This is one that I kind of wanted to do in that other format. Let the trailer immerse yourself, immerse you in the 
horror atmosphere that it's trying to go for. Uh, check it out. much is known about this one whether it's first person third person but the character models the the creature designs it all looks interesting as hell and i can't wait to see what uh um he has stored for us the creator of silent hill and uh you know how it shakes out gross number 16 Check this out, you're gonna love this. Where he came from. I don't wanna spoil it. He built Check it our out. village into a city. He's the one who trained our army, who grew us into an empire. I don't know where he's from, but if you think you can stop him, you're already dead. Oh! <laughs> What is happening? This this trailer just came out. This shit is wild. Are you are you saying we get to go back in time and bring modern technology into the medieval battles and shit? Shotguns, assault rifles, uh, fucking grenades. This is just like kind of like a, a cool technical test of what is possible with tons and tons of units on the screen at once. So it says go back in time to a war-torn medieval era with a vast arsenal of modern weapons. Change the course of history, save the future, in this epic action slash strategy sandbox type game. And you know what? You build your kingdom too. What? And you grab a gun, you lead an army of thousands into a massive real-time simulated battles, solo or in co-op. This thing looks a ton of fun. Check it out. He gave our people a future. I hope he can save his own. Number 15. It's Tempest Rising, and again, another RTS on my list. This one also like Command & Conquer, but this one more like the recent uh, Command & Conquers of uh, some of the 3D era uh, ones. And this has upgraded graphics, uh, uh, three distinct factions. We played the demo of this. We already know that this one is solid. This one is cool. So um, I want to support this. I want to support anybody that does these RTSs. Uh, so there's uh, basically classic RTS, uh, war on earth after a nuclear war and you got classic base building you got the flash fluid hard-hitting combat with multiplayer uh each faction a ton of units single player campaigns with some in-between mission cutscenes, there's going to be two epic single-player campaigns. I wonder why not three if there's three factions. So skirmish, custom games, and of course ranked multiplayer matchmaking uh, is all coming for Tempest Up, uh, Tempest Rising, and I will be there. You can play a demo of this right now. We have discovered a strange property on a large scale. New Wonderful. And it, it even the cutscenes look cheesy, and that's what it should be. I though I would have preferred like. The FMVs with people dressing up in costumes and shit, like, you know, nod, but yeah, they'll do it in cutscenes and in uh, CGI. Number 14. 
This thing has been marred in controversy. Uh, development has been really bad. They had to like fire and, and get rid of writers and switch studios and stuff. Uh, but Paradox Interactive is still trying the hell, uh, like hell, to get this thing done and out. And apparently it's a lot closer to release than we thought. It's this year, 2024, done by the Chinese Room. I don't know much about them, but apparently they're ready to reveal it. And this particular thing here is a gameplay trailer, what it's actually going to be like. They do a little vertical slice of kind of jumping around using vampire like abilities and then they do another slice of conversation and honestly you know for a double a budget i guess i'll say it looks pretty good and i want this to be awesome in the world of darkness world the original, not a lot of people know one. Joe and Alex went through it. That's where uh, Seduce, Joe, OJ the Seducer comes from, where he's like literally every single person he talks to in the game he's trying to have sex with and stuff. And that was what strength of the original uh, Vampire Masquerade Bloodlines game is the NPCs that you could talk to, a lot of dialogue options, a lot of different ways that you can approach that story, and that was what was unique. So hopefully that'll still be here. It says it is, fight your way through modern day Seattle on the brink of open world war as an elder vampire meet the power oh players God. in this world ally yourself and decide who will rule and what the city will become so hopefully the choices that you make uh, will be meaningful and hopefully the writers uh, that they got to replace the last one uh, really work out but i'm looking for a mature game i'm looking for plenty of blood and i'm looking for interesting dialogue and a story unfolding the gameplay mechanics don't necessarily need to be wild and out of this world but hopefully at least as good as that you know vampire battle royale that they have it's going to be a completely different game but we'll see what is this is totally single player so we'll see what they have on store for Tell us me, and if it works what out rumors have you um, heard about me? yeah the, 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 you were there in cairo they they called you the slayer i have been many things to many people and what will i be to you willem and to this lonely forgotten warehouse You're exactly what he said you'd be i guess that makes it easier makes what easier what happens next now i have to do what he told me Number 13. Biggest Dark Horse, Bioware is back with live service Dragon Age. You know this comes out this year, supposedly, and we still don't have a big reveal. The big reveal better be coming soon. So far, all we have is this kind of crappy tra trailer. Uh, but apparently, based on the description, enter the world of Thetis, uh, a vibrant land of rugged wilderness, treacherous labyrinths, and glittering cities, uh, stepped in savage, steeped in savage combat and secret magics. Now the, uh, the fate of the world teeters on the knife's edge. Uh, the full reveal is coming this summer of 2024, it says. Um, which I guess maybe this could be delayed to 2025 if they're revealing it in 2024, but there might be a small chance we might get it in the winter towards the end, like maybe a November, December. That's why it's here. It's probably going to be live service garbage. Number 12. What can I say? This is Hellblade 2. The first one was amazing. I know it's annoying. I know, like, if you haven't played it, please just go back and play it. This is Xbox Game Studios. This is Ninja Theory. This, the trailers have been amazing. The story is awesome. It's about personal. It, there's very lost ones. A great music check it out i'm gonna let the trailer play for itself because this is one that we are all hotly anticipating and waiting for each death inked in blood i won't stop fighting for them until the very last beat
what will I become? Number 11. This one was recently revealed at that Xbox showcase, and it jumped way up for me. You guys know how much I love strategy, how much I love real-time strategy. This one is a grand strategy with basically no preset paths to victory. You could j It's open, endless possibilities, and it's basically the choices that you make in the game are going to define how the, uh, the whole thing plays out. And uh, since it's kind of early, we don't have the exact mechanics for every single little thing uh, but you're building your nation let's see what it says here you got a richly detailed industrial and economic crafting system you're managing every detail from the output of a single mill uh, the the citizen stats of a city and uh, basically the combined resources of an entire nation it's a, it promises that you will be able to rule your well, way will you rule the Egyptians as a Queen Nefertiti, or will you rule the United States as George Washington? So fair, it feels very like civilization. I need more competitors. I need more people. I love civilization. I love seeing other people enter this space, seeing the diplomacy, seeing the interactions, making sure that the AI is good enough for it, because that's important in these types of games. And it says here they'll have distinct personalities and help determine their behaviors as your AI neighbors, allies, and enemies. Now, apparently the big claim here is that they have true simultaneous turns. So every turn, each nation's actions and choices resolve simultaneously. And that's going to be crazy. And hopefully it'll speed these games on along the way. Number 10. Broken Arrow, that's right. Slytherin always makes some of the best war strategy games. They've got the Terminator license. They've got Starship Troopers. This is a big one for them. It's like Warno. It's like uh, Ruse. It's like uh, all these legendary Steel Steel Battalion, or was that the mech game? A Steel Division, I think. And uh, I like these modern military uh, simulations. We have to be very careful and methodical, and there's a lot of urban combat here and uh, just realistic military units. This is so much fun. Don't be intimidated by these types of games. I'm telling you, it is so much fun. It's punishing, but you could just load it right up and play again. You learn from your mistakes. So a real-time modern warfare tactics game with a unique army, uh, army building system. We'll see how unique it actually ends up being. But with this many units, it could be really, really awesome provide us huge amounts of variety they recently had a 5v5 uh, beta which i was unable to to get time to put in but i loved my time uh, with the demo and i just can't wait for this thing to come out there's also going to be a powerful scenario editor the communities are always great behind this making some interesting stuff for us to play along with of course uh you know the developers themselves so i just can't wait to see what kind of uh scenarios they put together with Breaking 300 different units across the air, land, and sea. All right? And, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, let some of this play out here for you. Who's in the game? I got to say American, Russian factions, each containing four unique sub-factions, like Marines, Armored Battalions, Airborne Battalions, stuff like this. So it's kind of cool. You get to actually play out battles between two superpowers without in actually anybody actually dying. <laughs> you know, and uh, so we'll see if they include stuff like drones and things like that that's happening in real warfare these days. Um, adding new dimensions to the battlefield. I'm not unsure when it's exactly taking place, uh, but it should be a lot of fun, and I'm looking very much forward to Broken Arrow.
number nine. Guys, this is another one can can go either way. This is avowed. Now that is a single player like first person <laughs> fantasy RPG from Obsidian Entertainment. Uh, the people that brought you Fallout New Vegas. Uh, the people that you know have been uh, trying and doing their own thing on the side here. A lot of people compare them to Bethesda and these massive open world RPGs. They've been calling this the next Skyrim or the, their version of Skyrim. They're getting into fantasy with you know first person spells and of course sword combat. Now a recent Xbox reveal. Some people said it looked kind of worrisome it looked kind of janky but obsidian games have always been kind of janky so as long as the, there is a wide variety of things to do in the world I, it doesn't really matter that they're a little stiffer the character models and things like that to me um, some people compared it to like a vr uh, combat and stuff i was like god i hope not um, but apparently this they've been working on it for a while and this could be a huge hit i could see it going either way um and uh so we're gonna be fighting in the living lands a mysterious island filled with adventure and danger in the fictional world of eora and which is gonna be basically that was introduced in pillars of eternity uh franchise so we're gonna actually get a first person action rpg a view of that world which is pretty cool and uh yeah I just, I, I don't know how close it's going to be uh, to Skyrim. Can we make things that I want to know? Can I make a house? Can I can I pick up gems and decorate the house? I always like doing that in addition to it. But we'll see whether it leans more on the story. How good are the side quests? Are there dynamic emergent gameplay like there was in Skyrim? But it says here, mix and match swords, spells, and guns. Number eight. These are dangerous times. At least, that's what I hear. The Empire? Massive Ubisoft Star Wars. Can Ubisoft break out of its template shell and provide us something interesting? They call in this an action-adventure game set in Star Wars. They call it single player, third person action adventure set in a open world. Well, let's see how, if Ubisoft has managed to make this open world interesting enough for players. Are you gonna, it's, it says it features stealth, like open world in. combat, vehicle combat, space combat. Oh shit, now you've got me on board. Branching dialogue. Any game has branching dialogue if there's multiple choices, but when you say branching dialogue to me that better mean that there are branching storylines and just if i say this it's completely different than if i had said that that's what we need from this game it looks a little concerning i don't know about the main character they got the little pet is it gonna be too cutesy is it gonna be annoying is it gonna have fucking modern politics in it i don't know i just want a good ass story i want good ass characters and uh, I want an open world filled with activity. Star Wars is so rich for that. Will we get to play the little side chess game that they do uh, that Chewbacca so good at? Um, will we get to do these side missions? I know uh, there's we're, they're planet hopping. We're going to go to various planets. Now, granted, it's not going to be like Starfield where you can fucking walk the you can't even walk the entire view planets in Starfields. But I'm sure there are going to be little fucking. Uh, cordoned off sections and uh yeah uh and and uh they said it's gonna set between the empire strikes back and return of the jedi so they were all huge fans of the original trilogy so they definitely wanted to uh do a setting uh, and an ideal environment that uh, lends itself well to scoundrels and that because that's kind of what you're doing here so criminal criminal syndicates and we'll see how that factors into the story when it comes out number seven 
Another strategy game, this one directly from my nostalgia uh, uh, going after my heart. I have spent so many uh, sleepless nights staying up super late, playing the original Homeworld, playing Homeworld 2. So I just love the music. I love the ship designs. I love the zen nature, but that the intense space battles and how it goes back and forth. It becomes an immersive experience that washes over my body and it's pure space combat and you know how much I love space combat and strategy games so just melding them like this and then having that extra dimension on the Z axis it is the way it should be homeworld is back it's uh, uh, you know RTS real-time strategy I hope it continues the story the story is not all that amazing uh, but it could it could be in this iteration who knows but just everything works together on multiple levels i love the visuals i love the story and this one has war games co-op so you have a three-player co-op mode that extends your game beyond the campaign so it kind of sounds like a horde mode where you're going to be taking on a series of fleet combat challenges claiming powerful ag artifacts that augment your ships with more uh, power speed and weapons to be able to handle future waves so we'll see we'll see if that is worth uh, playing number six you have been chosen to another strategy game you guys know I'm, I'm huge on strategy manor lords has been looking better and better every time I see it it's a huge simulation uh, it is a medieval strategy game featured in-depth city building large-scale tactical battles and a complex economic and social simulation so you rule as a medieval lord lord angry joe it's like a meld of a fucking uh what what is the game it's like maybe total war with a city builder with a little bit of banner uh uh lords and that seems really fucking cool to me so weather changes uh, uh rival cities uh building this is you know crazy and it's been in development for a while and i'm looking forward to it i'm hoping that the real-time medieval warfare lives up to it i love that the city building part lives up to it and then just watching it all just kind of play out in front of me so can't wait Apparently, it's got a robust diplomacy system that will allow you to communicate with other worlds using influencer threats to sway their actions. And then they'll have their own goals that they're and asking you to help them with. So, uh, yeah, tactical real-time battles. Takes into consideration fatigue, weather, equipment. Position your troops wisely. Well, you're really building this up. This, <laughs> this better work out. This game is a passion project started by a solo developer, so I want it to succeed. I want this indie to succeed. Number five. Dragon's Dogma 2. This is a single player, narrative driven action RPG. I played the first one. It was a little hard to get into, a little rough around the edges, but it had the most amazing mechanic ever that I've always wanted to see in a video game. Climbing bosses, interacting with large objects and hacking a way out it like it should be. And, uh, you know, and a more realistic, grounded fantasy world, as realistic as you can be in a world that has magic and fantasy and stuff like this. This were all design philosophies of the series creator. And while the first one didn't immediately make a ton of sales, like a million, over time there was like seven million copies sold and Capcom uh, had, had to address it and had to come out with a sequel because people wanted it. So I hope it does well and uh, I'm sure it's going to be kind of difficult to get into, but in this day and age of difficult games, Dark Souls and, and, and Elden Ring has come since then, I think some of the more esoteric mechanics are something that people can get behind and accept and kind of immerse themselves in, in this world more willingly these days than way back uh, in those days. 
and they've got uh, the pawn system is back, making them more realistic. These are party members that you can bring with you that aren't, you know, players. They're like NPCs because it's single player. Um, but apparently they're ramping up the story, they're ramping up several features and taking it to the next level. The graphics, it kind of looks similar to the last one, uh, so as long as we've got those big creatures, it's going to be awesome. Number four. Sephiroth, Sephiroth, Sephiroth. Say that three times fast. It's a tongue twister. It is going to be featured big one in this. I am a new fan of Final Fantasy VII. Knew nothing about it. Didn't play the original. Alex introduced us to this, and uh, we really enjoyed the Final Fantasy VII uh, kind of remake. And so this is continuing that story. There was what? I don't know. How many discs were in the original? Three, six, something like that. How many discs are going to be this game? I think they'll probably do three games. What do you think? So this is the second one. Hopefully people... Uh, treat it just as excited as they were for the first even though it's called rebirth it's basically final fantasy 7 2 and i cannot wait we can handle this i will reclaim our world number three that's right Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl. Guys, it's Stalker 2. The trailers have looked so good. I love this world. It's so interesting. And uh, this is the, uh, you know, born from, oh, God, I forget the original novel. Uh, uh, but it, that it was inspired from. But basically, you have an exclusion zone filled with dangerous enemies and phenomenon and anomalies and, uh, you know, artifacts. And I just, uh, I like being able to kind of create your own story as you explore this kind of post-apocalyptic kind of world. And apparently in this game, you can make your own choices and they will vary wildly. They'll determine uh, different paths and questing paths. The story has been ramped up. It's an epic, non-linear story in a seamless open world. Is this really going to work? It says it's 64 kilometers squared. This is wild. And that's kind of what was fun about the original uh, Stalker is kind of going where you can and, and where you can survive and letting the game kind of dictate to you what you can do and then powering through sections and dictating to the game what you where you can go. So um, I like that. I hope it keeps it up. I hope that horror element is ramped up. And the story element looks ramped up in some of these recent trailers. So uh, just a unique blend of first-person shooting, uh, horror games, and um, open-world kind of exploration. And just wait for another super emission. Or take a chance and get control of the anomalous energy. I, I am kind of, you know, sometimes I get annoyed by those kinds of survival mechanics. There is hunger, sleeping, bleeding, radiation effects. Uh, apparently, all this enriches the gameplay. So we're going to see. Is it is it annoying? Does it does it uh, actually add to the game? I think it will, especially with dynamic day-night cycles and adding as much realism to the experience as possible with new mod support. So looking forward to it. And a multiplayer mode as a free update later. That's interesting. Number two. We're facing oh, yeah. Splinter Fleet. Space Marine is back, baby. <laughs> this is a selfish personal pick. Number two, Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2. I just love the 40K universe, and I can't get over it. Um, so Space Marine is back, baby, and I cannot wait. We are fighting the Tyranid Hordes. It is going to be glorious epic battles for the emperor on far-flung uh, planets i hope that there is plenty of lore uh plenty of story and apparently we have in this one cooperative i've always wanted that in space marine we get it here i'm going to be able to go and destroy the enemy with joe at my side my battle brother hell yes let the trailer take it from here Oh, 
Open the gates. Care to see who can slay more Xenos for the Chiron? Eradicate the galaxy from the Xenos. Bill, me, Joe, Alex, it's perfect. Three player. Oh, it's gonna be great. I can't wait. Number one. Glory fades through time. Number one, Black Myth Wukong. That's right, the uh, Chinese sensation ever since the trailer debuted. And people were like, what is this game fake? How can it look so awesome, so cool? The world is so interesting. It's filled with Chinese lore and mythology and creatures i just love that and i cannot wait for western audiences to see this and i hope that more we do get more chinese developers and we do get more worlds like this if they're looking this impressive i hope it's not yeah it, it delivers on all of it of what it's promising and it doesn't end up being something you know that it's not um, but it looks great. It looks like it could be this year's Elden Ring, and it definitely is coming out this year, August 19th, 2024. The day is fast approaching, and yeah, as the, the Destined Ones, uh, the Monkey God, you can venture through breathtaking landscapes in the classic tale of Journey to the West. I'm destined for extermination! Lord driven by glory, not destiny. So this is the face of the death. Yeah, confront mighty foes, old and new. It looks like all these bosses are really entertaining to fight. You have some really cool move sets. Uh, we've all seen the trailers, and it looks great. And I hope that the um, the voice acting looks high quality, the animations are high quality, the music sounds great, and the world is filled with engaging new, you know, uh, creatures and personalities to interact with. So what can I say other than I think this is going to be great, and it is my most anticipated game of 2024. Sweet destiny. That's my list, guys. What is yours? I know this format is awkward. I'm still looking for what uh, format I want to do. But many of you wanted to hear my commentary on these and not just the trailers. Uh, but I did want to kind of immerse you for each one of these. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Let me know if your game made the list. Let me know what games I missed. 30 is a lot. Tell me if there's any games I missed because I want to see them. And I'll read down the comments down below. And thank you so much. And I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, everybody.